Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. I know I've been gone for a while and I do apologize about that. I'll make I'll probably make a video later on explaining where I've been for the past ages, but here I am with yet another review and today we're going to be taking a look at the fantastic trilogy of Crash Bandicoot. Of course, the PS4 remake, not the original trilogy, which I've already kind of covered as a let's play, but that's beside the point. Anyway, let's move into the review. Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy is a Super Mario All-Stars-esque remake of the original trilogy of Crash games all the way from back in the PS1 era. As a result, the games are essentially largely the same, with a fantastic visual overhaul that looks absolutely gorgeous, with minor tweaks here and there to the gameplay formula. Some of the biggest tweaks actually come in the form of the controls and hitboxes that have been modified to some extent in order to make the three games flow much more similarly to each other, which in the case of Crash Bandicoot 1, makes the game control significantly better. In fact, the biggest changes in this collection all revolve around Crash Bandicoot 1, as many of the biggest turnoffs from the original title have been ironed out, more specifically, gem requirements have been changed. No longer do I find myself having to flat out perfect every single level of zero deaths to collect gems. Instead, this requirement has simply been tweaked. So now, the items are handled the exact same way as they are in Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3. Basically, get all the boxes and boom, the gem is yours, with the exception of the coloured gems. With these, the original requirement of mastering the level is still present, which is still slightly annoying. But seeing as this is only 6 levels in the game, as opposed to the entire summer 30 odd stages that originally you had to do this on, I can happily get past this. In regards to the controls too, the only real gripes I sort of have is due to the jumping animation and Crash's overall hitbox. The landing of Crash's jump is slightly faster than it used to be in the previous versions of the game, and the hitbox has some weird issues at points which I found myself slipping off of objects as a result. These are mostly issues that exist primarily to me because of my muscle memory from playing the original trilogy, however. So for any newcomers, this isn't likely to be too big a deal, and I found myself adjusting to the new control scheme and new quirks rather quickly in the grand scheme of things. Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3 are a lot more true to their original games, however, compared to Crash 1, as a result of much less things being needed to be tweaked and modernized, and they are essentially as they were in gameplay all those years ago. Although there are some minor differences that do exist, such as boss entrances existing as portals in Crash 2's case, the red gem in Snowgo has been moved slightly to stop you from possibly acquiring it quicker than you should, and that one dickish box in Cold Hard Crash has been made slightly easier to find. The animal levels in Crash 2 and 3 also control slightly differently, which may bug some long-time fans. However, I have no real complaints over their new movements. And finally, Crash Bandicoot 3's vehicle levels are essentially as you remember, although in the case of the biplane levels, an aiming radical has actually been added to make things much easier to aim, and Coco's jet ski levels have been... changed. Basically, I don't like what they've done to these stages in this collection, because I find Coco's jet ski control significantly worse, in my opinion, from the original tiles due to a lot of added weight in the control scheme, which makes turning a hell of a lot harder and just aiming the direction that you're meant to be going feels somewhat imprecise. I won't lie and say this ruins the levels entirely, but I do feel it makes them a hell of a lot less fun than they were originally. Also, as a neat bonus, the trilogy includes Coco as a playable character in every single game, which is Nothing more than a reskin, but it's a nice addition nonetheless, and I really do appreciate it. Presentation wise though, this is above and beyond what I expected, with the visuals being, well, just look at them! And not even including the cutscenes being bloody brilliant to watch, featuring some lovely bouncy animations. Heck, the time trials from Crash 3 has even been moved into the first two titles for extra replayability, although Crash Bandicoot 1 is clearly not designed with speed running in mind. But not only that, at the time of this review, DLC in the form of Stormy Ascent has come to the game as well, which was originally a cut level from the first game, as it was uh, deemed too hard. Yeah, I know, too hard for Crash 1. Jesus Christ, how hard can this level be?
<coughs> well, the answer is really starting hard. But ultimately, Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy is an absolutely fantastic recreation of the first three games that newcomers and fans alike would very likely enjoy it, especially if you're into your platforming. And it, it's basically the definitive version of these games, flat out. It's just like Super Mario All-Star is to the first three Mario games. And while some people will still prefer to play the original game just because some things here and there have been tweaked in terms of the control schemes, I, I, I honestly, I recommend this to anybody who's a fan of Crash Bandicoot. If you like the games, pick this up. If you don't like the games, but you're always kind of curious, I still recommend it, because they're just solid titles through and through. And even as a bonus, they add a little hints in the loading screens for certain cryptic areas. And another thing I didn't mention in the bulk of the review is, they added a little box counter at the top of the screen in all three games as well, which is... Convenient, I guess. I mean, it's, it's not 100% necessary, but it makes it makes finding all the boxes and levels a little bit easier, I suppose. But not so much easier. But you know what I mean. It's you can keep a counter on how many how many boxes you got left. But that's it for the review. Basically, fantastic game, and I recommend it wholeheartedly. And with that, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope this gives you an idea on whether or not to buy the game. And uh, I shall catch you all again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you after.